Hi everyone, this is Matt from Open Builds. In this instructional video, we're going to show you how to wire up your CB machine. So this is going to be all inclusive. We're going to show you how to wire up your LED light ring, your micro limit switches. Everything's going to be configured into corrugated tubing, as you can see here. It's all nice and organized and aesthetically pleasing. And of course, everything's going to be wired back to your black box motion control system. So this is going to be super exciting. We'll be running through the software as well, so everything will be configured into your Gerbil settings. And we'll make sure that we're running G-Code by the end of this video. So make sure to stay tuned, follow along with the steps, and let's get started. Okay, so on this first step, we're going to go ahead and establish a connection to each one of our motors here for the CB machine. So we have our Y-axis, our X-axis, and of course our Z-axis up top here. So what I have laid out here for this step is just three four conductor wires. All three of them are at three feet. And of course my tooling, I just have a flathead screwdriver. So to get started first, I want to go ahead and turn our attention towards our Y-axis motor. Okay, so over here at the motor, you'll see that we have our connectors that are attached to the motor. These simply disconnect, and you can reestablish that connection by just plugging it back in. And what we see on top here is pens. And each one of these pens you have to loosen before you insert the wire. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen each one of these pens on this connector. And what you should see is these metal inserts, they should be at the bottom of this housing. So I'm going to keep loosening until I see that. That way we get a solid connection when we attach our wires. Okay, so now that the inserts are at the bottom, I'm going to take one of my three foot four conductor wires. And all we're going to do here is match up the colors that we see here, which these are the coil pairs. They've already been paired off from the factory. So this is for your convenience here, and all you have to do is match up the colors. It's that easy. So we're looking at red, blue, green, and yellow for working from right to left. So I'm going to go ahead and insert those wires. And once you have those fully inserted, just go ahead and tighten down each one of these pens on top. Okay, what I like to do is just give those a tug, make sure that they're fully inserted. And then we're going to match these colors up. Just make sure that each one is corresponding. So we have red, red, blue, blue, green, green, and yellow and yellow. Okay, so next we're gonna move to our X-axis motor, which is on the left side of the machine if you're to face the back. So we're gonna go ahead and turn our attention here towards the left side. Once again, like we did our Y-axis motor, we're gonna loosen each one of these pens. Make sure those inserts are at the bottom of the housing. We're gonna grab one of our three foot four conductor wires. And once again, just matching up the colors here, red, blue, green, and yellow. All right, give those a tug. Once again, we're going to double check those colors, red, blue, green, and yellow, red, blue, green, and yellow. Okay, so for our last motor, that's our Z-axis. It's right up top here. We're going to go ahead and connect our three-foot cable. Okay, so same as we did the last motors. Let's go ahead and finish this one up. All right, give those a tug. Once again, double check those colors. All right, so now that we completed our last motor here, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So on this next step, we're gonna be assembling our micro limit switches as well as connecting our LED light ring to our router spindle mount. So what I have gathered here is my parts that I'm gonna use for this step. I have three, three conductor wires at three feet. I have one two conductor wire at three feet. I have an LED light ring and three of the micro limit switch kits. So you can see here that I have two already assembled just to give you an example of how this configuration works. And then of course I have one broken out here and we'll assemble that one together. So to get started, first I wanna go ahead and detach my router spindle mount and I'm gonna go ahead and install my LED light ring. So taking my ball driver, I'm gonna loosen four of these screws that are attached to my black angle corner connectors. Okay, once you have that detached, on the opposite side, I'm gonna loosen each one of these screws to take these black angle corner connectors off. That way I can place my LED light ring. Okay, and from underneath, I'm gonna go ahead and place my LED light ring. You'll see that it aligns to the two holes. 
And then I'm going to insert my black angle corner connectors back to these two holes. All right, now that we have this in place, I'm going to go ahead and mount this back to my C-beam gantry plate. All right, make sure that that's nice and secure. Okay, so next we're going to turn our attention here to the micro limit switches. We already have two configured for our X and Y axis. So you can see that my screws are all here on the front plate. And then of course I have my slot washer and drop and T-nut on the back end. The micro limit switch that I have broken out here is going to differ slightly. Basically this screw is going to be on the opposite side. That way we have placement of the micro limit switch like so. So taking the micro limit switch, all we're going to do is take the front plate here, place that in line with the two holes, and add our M3 self-threading screws. And we're going to attach that to the plastic. So we'll just screw right into the plastic housing. Just like so. From there, add a nylon spacer in the middle between the two plates. And then on the opposite end, I'm going to run this screw through, add a slot washer, and then I'm going to thread on the drop-in T-nut. And that's what the assembly should look like. Super simple. Okay, so this is our Z micro limit switch. So we're going to go ahead and turn our attention towards the top of our Z axis. Okay, so up here at the top of the Z axis, I'm going to place my micro limit switch here in the left track of the C-beam. And now that I have that locked into place, basically what you should see is your Z gantry plate interact with that plunger of the micro limit switch. So I'm using the flexible coupling here to just bring this gantry plate upright. Okay, so next we're gonna go ahead and move on to our X and Y micro limit switch. First focusing on the X axis. So we're gonna turn our attention here to the left side of our X axis. So here on the left side of the top track, right in front of this front edge of the 90 degree joining plate, I'm going to place my micro limit switch. And once again, interaction between the X carriage and our micro limit switch will be evident once this moves to the left side for a homing sequence. So the idea is to maximize your travel and also have that limit in place just for a homing sequence. Moving on to the Y-axis micro limit switch, we're going to come here to the front of our Y-axis and we're going to place that limit switch. So the idea here for this limit switch is to interact with the nylon hex nut that's attached to the wheel. So looking at this bottom track, I'm going to place my micro limit switch to where I can maximize my travel once again and also have interaction between the wheel and the plunger of the micro limit switch. Okay, so you can see I'm about half of an inch away from my cast corner bracket here, and that position's perfect here for max travel on the y-axis. Okay, so next we're going to turn our attention here to the wires. Once again, we have three three-conductor wires and one two-conductor wire. What I'm going to do is go ahead and detach our connector that's attached to the LED light ring, and I'm going to work with my two-conductor wire here, loosening each one of the pins on top like we did for our motors. Next, take the two conductor wire. Red is positive, black is negative. Red is gonna to be to the right with the pins facing upright and black to the left. Once again, that's with the pins facing upright and then tighten down those pins. And we'll reattach that to our LED light ring. Throw the wire towards the back. And don't concern yourself with the mess. There are a lot of wires back here. We're going to get everything labeled and organized after this step. So don't stress the mess right now. Next, we're going to take one of our three conductor three foot cables and we're going to attach that to one of our micro limit switches. Once again, these are consistent in size, so it doesn't matter which one goes where, as long as each micro limit switch receives a three conductor wire. So starting here with the X, I'm going to go ahead and detach the male connector. And on the micro limit switch, you'll see the indications here for ground, positive, and signal. So when inserting your connector, 
with the pins facing upright, we need the ground to the left, positive, which is red in the center, and then blue to the right, that's gonna be our signal. So I'm gonna loosen each one of these pins. And once again, black to the left, red in the center, and blue to the right. Once you have those connected, go ahead and tighten down each pen. All right, and go ahead and reattach that to the micro limit switch. Next, moving to the Z-axis micro limit switch, I'm gonna go ahead and take the pen connector off and loosen each one of the pens on top. And just like the last, black to the left, red in the center, blue to the right with the pens facing upright. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and plug that back in. Okay, lastly, we have our Y-axis micro limit switch. Same exact process. Let's go ahead and get that done. Okay, so now that we have our last micro limit switch configured, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna go ahead and organize and label all of our wires. So what I have here is some painter's tape and a permanent marker. And let's go ahead and start with our motors first. So always focusing on the point of origin, we're going to trace the wire back and then get an accurate label onto that wire. So moving our attention to the top here, you'll see one running off of the Z-axis motor. I'm gonna trace that back. And I'm going to label this ZM for Z motor. Okay, moving forward, I'm going to move to the left side, which is our X axis motor. Once again, locating it from the point of origin. And I'm going to label this XM for X motor. Next, moving to the Y axis motor. Once again, grabbing some painter's tape, we're going to label this YM for Y motor. Okay, following that, I'm going to move to my micro limit switches. So here on the top of the Z axis, you'll see the Z micro limit switch. Locate that from the point of origin. And I'm going to label this one ZML for Z micro limit. Next here on the Z axis, you'll see a two conductor wire coming off the LED light ring. We're gonna label that LED. Next, moving to our X micro limit switch, which is located here on the right side of the machine if you're to face the back. And I'm gonna label this XML for X micro limit. Following that, we're gonna locate the Y micro limit, which is located here at the top end of the Y axis. And I'm going to label this YML for Y micro limit. So that completes the labeling of our wires. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're going to be attaching our slot covers here to the X axis and Y axis. And the reason for doing so is we're routing wires to the back of the machine so we can attach it to our controller board. So the idea here is to have one of our 500 millimeter slot covers along with one 250 millimeter slot cover. And we're going to route this through the C-beam on the bottom channel here for the X-axis micro limit switch. And then for the Y-axis micro limit switch, we're also going to route it at the bottom of the C-beam. So starting here first with the X-axis micro limit switch, let's go ahead and run this through the bottom channel of the C-beam. And this is 500 millimeters, and also the slot cover is 500 millimeters. So what I've done is I've cut off about half of an inch, and that gives you plenty of room here to work with. So you just run that into the slot of the C-beam, and that should be your end result there. So we have our X-axis micro limit switch slot cover in place. Let's go ahead and move to the Y-axis. Here at the Y-axis micro limit switch, we're gonna take our 250 millimeter slot cover, and there's no need to cut it down because this is going to fit in between the micro limit switch and our cast corner bracket here on our frame of the machine. So sliding this into place, what I like to do is split the difference between the wire and that cast corner down here at the back end. 
and we'll leave that wire running towards the back of the machine for now. Okay, so now that we have our wires routed here for our micro limit switches, what we need to do now is rotate our machine towards the back. And we're gonna grab some additional components and work on routing our wires here on the Z axis as well. So now that we have our machine rotated, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of my corrugated tubing here. And this should be 12 inches in length. And these three wires that are attached here to the Z axis, I'm gonna run those through this corrugated tubing. Once you have that complete, one thing to really pay attention to is the LED light ring wire. Now this wire needs to have some slack so your gantry can move up and down without pulling this wire loose. So you can see here that my gantry is at the bottom of the Z axis and I can see how much length I actually need for this run to stay, to stay intact. So keep that in mind and make sure that you have the proper length here for this LED light ring wire. Next, bringing in one of my flex tubing clamps, I'm going to clamp this end of the corrugated tubing and mount this onto the C-beam. So right here on the third track is where I'm gonna mount this into place. So I'm gonna take one eight millimeter screw, this is an M5 eight millimeter screw, and one drop in T-nut, and that's how I'm gonna mount this into place. Okay, so once we have this mounted into place, once again, just make sure that you do have enough slack here for your LED light ring. And let's go ahead and work on mounting our opposite end of the flex tubing. So once again, bringing in one of my flex tubing clamps, I'm gonna go ahead and clamp down, add my eight millimeter screw and drop in T-nut. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this into the top track of the C-beam here. All right, now that we have our corrugated tube mounted here to the Z axis, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're gonna be assembling our black box motion control system as well as our power supply unit. So what I have set out here is the assemblies once they are complete. I'm gonna link the videos up at the top right corner here. So all you have to do is follow along with each assembly video. It takes about five minutes in total for each. Really easy assemblies. And then at that point, we can start back here. So this is the completed black box once it's assembled with the PCB case, super sweet. And then we have the power supply unit with the power case assembled. So in addition to that, the other parts that are included in this kit, you'll see your power cable here, which provides power to your power supply unit. And of course your, your power cord, which is going to attach from your power supply unit to your black box motion control system providing power to this unit. Along with that, you'll see that I have my four pin mail connectors and three pin mail connectors laid out here. Those come attached to the black box. So all I'm doing is taking those off and laying them out here. The additional mounting hardware, which is the two M5 six millimeter screws and drop in T-nuts, those also come with the black box. So first to get started here, I'm gonna go ahead and take my black box motion control system here, and I'm gonna go ahead and insert my M5 six millimeter screws on the bottom slots of each one of these sections of the black box. And the reason for doing so is once we insert our four pin connectors, you're not gonna be able to get those screws in. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie on the drop in T-nuts to each screw, just like that. Okay, now that that's complete, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my attention here to my four pin mail connectors. Since we have three motors on the CB machine, we're only going to utilize the three four pin mail connectors. So taking one of the connectors here, just like we did in previous steps, we're gonna go ahead and loosen each one of these pins on top until those inserts are at the bottom of the housing. And here on the input section of the black box, you'll see we have motors, and then of course our limits up top. So we're going to be corresponding those to each one of our motors. So starting here first with the Y-axis motor, and we have all of these labeled for our convenience here. So the Y motor, we're going to insert the colors as I show here. Working our way from left to right, we're going to insert red, blue, 
green, and yellow. Make sure you fully insert those wires. And then let's go ahead and tighten down those pens. All right, give those a tug. Make sure that you do have red, blue, green, and yellow working our way from left to right, with the pins facing upright. And we're going to insert this into the Y motor, not the Y2 motor, just the Y motor. It's that easy, just plug it in. And let's move to our next motor. Following the same steps here, loosen these pens. And we'll move on to the X motor next. So over here at the left side, we're gonna go ahead and grab our X motor. Now one thing I want you to pay attention to here is how my wires are running through the machine. So you'll see that they're running across these bracer bars here and through the center of the machine, that's exactly how you need to go ahead and configure it. So this is our X motor. And once again, with the pens facing upright, red, blue, green, and yellow. Since this is our X motor, we're looking for X motor input here. Plug that in. And let's move to our last motor, which is our Z axis motor. And this is gonna be the same exact way. Red, blue, green, and yellow, working our way from left to right with the pins facing upright. All right, make sure that those colors are matching what I have here. Red, blue, green, and yellow with the pins facing upright. And this is for our Z-axis motor located here. Simply plug that in. Next, moving on to our three pin male connectors. I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of my micro limit switches. This is the Z micro limit. What I'm gonna do here is loosen each one of the pins just like we did the motors. And then we're going to insert the wire. So on the black box, you will see our inputs for our limit switches. You'll see ground, positive, and signal. It's exactly how we're gonna insert our wires. So with the pins facing upright, we're gonna have black to the left, red in the center, blue to the right. All right, we're gonna locate Z limit and plug that in. All right, we're gonna do the same exact thing for the additional micro limit switches. So just follow what I do here and let's get that done. All right, so now that we have all of our motors and micro limit switches into place, what we're going to do now is mount the black box here in this right panel. So taking my ball driver here, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the back right side of the machine. All right, that looks great. So we have our black box mounted. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to our power supply. So turning our attention here to the power supply unit, first thing we're going to do is switch this little relay switch here on the side to 115. If you're in the States from the factory, you'll see it at 230. So definitely want to switch that. Otherwise you won't have power to your system. Other than that, we're going to simply plug in our power cord here. Our power cord to the black box. So you'll see here, we have a output section for our power supply. That's where it's gonna plug in. You have two options here. Either one will work. And then from the opposite end, what I'm gonna do here is add my LED light ring so we have power whenever we turn on our controller. So loosening the two pins here, I'm gonna take my LED light ring wire Red is gonna go with white and black is gonna go with black here on this power cable. Go ahead and tighten that down. And on the right side of the black box, there is a section for the power supply. We're simply going to plug this into place here. Okay, so now that we have our black box mounted, all of our wires are configured into our controller. Next, we need to go ahead and organize our wires. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so for this next step, we're gonna go ahead and organize all of our wires, basically making sure that we have our routes set up as well as configuring 
some of these wires into our flex tubing here. So I have my parts laid out here that we're going to need for this step. I have 15 zip ties, two flexible tubing clamps, one M5 8mm screw, and one drop-in T-nut. I also have four 250mm slot covers. And along with that, of course, I have my ball driver and a pair of snips. So to get started first, let's go ahead and turn our attention towards this bundle of wire here on the left side of the black box. Now the idea here is to bundle these wires together. That way we can fit these into our flexible tubing right here. So taking the bundle, I'm going to start here from the opposite end and just get a bundle started. And I'm going to work my way on down. Okay, so I have two of the zip ties in place here. You can see that my bundle's pretty much solidified. So taking my flex tubing here, you can see that you can just split this open and we're gonna wrap this around our wires. And that's really just gonna give us that nice aesthetic appeal. Everything's gonna be nice and organized. Okay, so, so far, you can see that I have two additional wires that are coming from the X motor as well as the X micro limit switch. Now the idea here is to make sure that these are tight against the bottom piece of this X axis C beam. So what I'm gonna do is zip tie this placement here. And that way I have a reference point of how tight I need to pull this. Okay, with that pulled tight, I'm going to layer these back over the additional wires that we see here that are already inserted into this flex tubing. So you can see how I'm layering over top, basically with an additional fold. Okay, so once we have everything configured into our flex tubing, I'm going to take a zip tie here and secure these two wires. You can see the two wires from the X motor and the X micro limit switch come through this corner. So we need to zip tie those to the corrugated tubing. So now you can see this is really starting to take shape here. Basically have like a C configuration that runs behind the x-axis C-beam and down our frame components. And the idea here is we need to go ahead and take some of our flex tubing clamps and we're gonna secure this into place. So next what we're gonna do is go ahead and take one of our flex tubing clamps. I'm gonna clamp the bottom portion of the flex tubing here, adding one of my eight millimeter screws and a drop-in T-nut. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this on the bottom of our frame here, this is the 20 by 60 that's included in our frame components. Okay, so that should be the end result there. You can see we have it mounted to the 20 by 60 underneath. Now we're gonna come here to the top portion of the flex tubing, and we're gonna add our additional flex tubing clamp. Okay, so now that we have our flex tubing clamps in place, I'm gonna come over here to our two wires that ran through the center of the machine. Once again, I'm gonna zip tie these just to make sure they're one unit. So next I'm gonna turn my attention to our connectors that are attached to our motors. Each one of those connectors, I wanna go ahead and zip tie just to solidify that connection. So starting here with the Y-axis motor, what I'm gonna do is weave this zip tie through each sets of wires. Snip off the excess there, and then I'm going to fasten this to the 40 millimeter spacer here, just to keep this connector into place. All right, next I'm gonna to move to my X motor. And once again, I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie this around the 40 mil spacer. Moving to the Z-axis motor next. And then underneath here, I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie these three wires together. 
All right, so now we have all of our wires organized and configured into our flex tubing here. Our additional slot covers that we have. These are spares basically for the aesthetics of your machine. You can bling it out here. Each one's 250 millimeters. So you can either insert your wires, any additional components you're going to be adding to this machine. These slot covers definitely will come in handy. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, so on this next step, we're going to be adding our USB cable to our controller board, as well as tidying up some of these wires here on the right side of the black box. So what we have exposed currently is the power cable. And what I wanna do is just add a corrugated tubing to this cable here, and just make sure that it's out on the edge of the extrusion and it's locked into place. You don't have to worry about any type of pulling motion on this disconnecting your controller. So what I have gathered here is the parts we're gonna use in this step, a USB cable, one foot of our corrugated tubing, two flex tubing clamps, a self-tapping screw, an M5 eight millimeter screw, and a drop-in T-nut. And along with that, my tooling I'm using is the ball driver, and of course I have my power drill. Okay, to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this power cable into the flex tubing here. So what I like to do is just open up the, the sliced end of the corrugated tubing here and just work it in the side of the tubing. It's the easiest way to do it, really. So next, since I have my corrugated tubing onto the power cable here, I'm gonna take my USB cable. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in to the right side of the black box here. You'll see a serial port section for your USB cable. So right here, you'll see that serial port. We're gonna go ahead and plug that in. Then I'm gonna feed this through the flex tubing as well. Okay, next I'm gonna take one of my flex tubing clamps and I'm gonna clamp around the top side. And so I'm gonna take an eight millimeter screw and I'm gonna feed it through this clamp. And what I like to do is add that drop in T-nut to hold this into place. And from there, I'm gonna mount it in this outer track of our 20 by 60. And then down here at the bottom, I'm gonna utilize the ends of the 20 by 60 extrusion with a flex tubing clamp as well as a self-tapping screw. And I'm gonna mount that into place. Okay, so that should be the end result here. You'll see that we have our USB cable as well as our power cable coming out the outer end of our flex tubing clamp. And this is what you should see. So you see we have all of our flex tubing here. Everything is contained. All of our wires are organized. So this is exactly what we're looking for here. So next we're going to bring in our laptop. Let's go ahead and plug in our USB cable and let's move on to the software portion. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is go ahead and open up our browser. And from there, we're going to openbuilds.com. And this will bring you to the OpenBuilds forum, which is an absolute great place to find information and to just communicate with other like-minded builders and engineers. Just a really great place just to post your machine builds and just, you know, if you have questions or concerns, this is the place to ask those questions. So besides that, we're looking for the software. So up at the top here, you'll see the tab for software. Go ahead and select that. We're looking for the Open Builds Control Machine Driver. So select that. And from there, you're gonna see options here for Windows, Mac, and Linux. We're gonna select the option for Windows. I'm using a Windows computer and I'm gonna download that executable. And from there, you're gonna see some prompts pull up, just run through the prompts, and install, and select finish. And you'll receive this notification that the control has started, so go ahead and select that. So once you have the OpenBuilds controller pulled up, you'll see that we have compositions here on the top left corner we are going to select the FTDI USB to serial. So mine is uh, composition four. It could be different on your computer, but you're looking for the FTDI USB. So go ahead and connect. And from there, you'll see the serial console tab pull up and it's gonna load your Gerbil settings, which are default for your black box. But we're gonna go in and modify that. So we don't have any power to our machine, which is exactly what we want. We just wanna configure our Gerbil settings first. So the first thing you're gonna see is your alarm state. It's gonna be active. Just go ahead and select unlock alarm. 
And the purpose of this is just for safety precautions. So if you were to power your machine on and you accidentally hit one of these jog buttons, your machine's not gonna move because that alarm state's active. So it's just, you know, for your protection. All you have to do is hit unlock alarm and from there you can access these, these jog widgets. We're gonna go to Gerbil settings and from there we're gonna load a default setting, which is really cool. So this is really convenient. If you buy a machine from Open Builds, rest assured you are supported. We have all these settings pre-populated into the specific category of your machine. So if you have an Acro, a lead machine, a Sphinx or a Work B, you would select these options and based on your configuration, you would select that option. So we have Open Build Sphinx 10, 50, and 55. Since we're using the C-Beam machine, I'm gonna go into this drop-down menu and you'll see we have options for the C-Beam XL as well as the C-Beam machine. So we're gonna select the C-Beam machine and that'll populate here in your default settings. We have limit switches installed. And from there, you're gonna to go to the top left corner and save to firmware. And this is going to populate your default settings. So all your advanced settings here are gonna be populated. So you can run through here and just double check and see if everything's to your specifications. You know, obviously these default settings have been tested thoroughly by Open Builds engineers. So I would keep these settings until you get comfortable with your machine. You can always modify these later on. So now that we have our settings configured here into our controller, let's go back to the control tab and let's go ahead and power on our machine. Okay, so now that we have our system powered on, you should see your LED light ring shining brightly here onto your work surface. Also, you'll hear your motors activate as well as the fan cooling your black box motion control system. So these are all signs that your machine is powered on and is functioning. So now what we need to do is go ahead and jog the machine around and make sure that everything is moving in the right direction. So once again, these are default settings. So the directions and movements of the machine is really contingent on how you wired up the machine. So if you followed along with this video step by step, then you should have a, the exact same movements that I see here. So setting at a 10 millimeter increments here, I'm gonna move my X axis. Now a positive movement is going to move this gantry to the right. A negative movement is gonna move it to the left. So let's see if it's functioning correctly here. As you can see, it is moving to the right. So this is a positive movement and that is functioning perfectly. And we'll try negative movement and it is moving in the opposite direction. That's perfect. So next we're moving to the Y axis. So a positive movement for the Y axis is gonna work a little bit different. So a positive movement is going to move this table to the front of the machine and a negative movement is going to move it back towards the controller. So what I like to picture here is the actual router moving similar to a Cartesian style machine where the gantry is actually moving back and forth. Since this is just a table, the table is actually moving in the opposite direction. So if you would visualize that the router is moving forward, that would be a negative movement. And then of course, a positive movement would be back into the field. So as this table moves forward, it's actually a positive movement because your router is going back further into the work area. So let's see if the positive movement's working correctly. We should see this move to the front of the machine. And we do, so that looks great. Negative movement, once again, is gonna go in the opposite direction. So just familiarize yourself with the positives and negatives for each axis. And then of course we have our Z axis. So a positive movement is going to move this router spindle mount up and down would be a negative movement. So still at 10 millimeter increments here, positive movement is moving up towards our micro limit switch. Negative is moving back down towards our work area. Okay, so everything looks great there. Our default settings are working perfectly. So now we can go into the troubleshooting tab where I want to test my limits. So my micro limits are all based on a signal to the controller board. So by activating each plunger in the troubleshooting tab, you'll see an indication here of the status. So this is just a great way to test your limits before you actually run a homing cycle on your machine. So just precautionary, you wanna make sure that everything is working correctly before you just run a homing cycle. So 
looking at my x-axis, I'm going to go ahead and activate this plunger. And the first thing you're going to see is an alarm state. So hard limits are enabled for this machine. So anytime your machine interacts with a micro limit switch, it's going to stop, which is great. I love that feature because you don't want your gantry to run off the side or into the extrusion. It's just, it's not good for the machine. So go ahead and hit cancel here. We want the alarm state to be active. That way I can show you the status feature. So the x-axis micro limit switch, you see that it's on. When I release, it goes off. So we know our X limit is working correctly. Let's go on to the Z axis. Once again, it's working great. And then the Y axis. Everything is functioning perfectly. So we know everything is configured correctly. Our micro limit switches are functioning. So now we can go ahead and run a homing cycle. Up here at the top, you'll see home all. And this option here is going to run you through that cycle. So go ahead and select this. You should see your Z-axis first. This is gonna to come to the Z-axis micro limit switch and then your X and Y. Now one thing to pay attention to is if you see your machine going in the wrong direction, something's wired wrong and you need to stop it. So this big hand here that's circled in red, that's stop job, you can stop that movement. So just something to keep in mind, you know, you just want to stay safe with these machines. Okay, so everything's perfect there. Our homing cycle works great. So now I want to go ahead and go into some of the features of this control software. It's just really cool. It's very intuitive. You're going to find it extremely easy to use. Now the first thing that we're going to go over is our digital readouts here, also known as the DROs. So these are work coordinates in your machine's work area. So based on the movements of your machine and the parameters you have set up in your settings, these are the indications of those movements. So we have Z, Y, and X, and you also have options to set the zero point for an individual or all three. You also have the go to zero feature, which we'll go over as we run some G code on this machine. We're actually gonna run a hello world, so we'll go into uh, the zero point and how important that is to starting your projects. So you have options here to go to Z, and then of course, your second option here, which is just a retract C and your uh, machine coordinates versus work coordinates. You also have the millimeters mode or inch mode. So if you prefer the standard system over the metric, you can select inch mode and uh, that option is available. And you'll see that your increments here change to inches as well. I prefer millimeters when working with these machines. It's more precise, but that's just my preference. So the option is available, which is really cool. Also, we have, you know, our jog buttons here, which we've gone over, but we also have the continuous jog feature, which is really cool. You select this option here, you go into wizards and tools, and you can customize your keyboard shortcuts, which is really cool. So I generally stick with the default here, save and apply, and you can actually move this machine around with your keyboard, which is really cool. Kind of like a video game. So as long as you're holding a button, the gantry will move. So just a really cool feature there. Also in Wizards and Tools, we have a lot of options here, which is really cool. We have the surfacing and flattening wizard, which is great. This option here is just essential when starting any type of project. You wanna make sure that your work surface is perpendicular to your router. So after tramming your router, you wanna make sure that you surface your, your spoiler board, basically. So you're gonna find a point on the spoiler board that's level with your router, and at that point, you'll surface it. Now this, now this wizard simplifies that process. Basically, you're gonna enter in your bit diameter, step over your feed rate, width, length, and skim depth. And from there, you just run this job. It's that easy. Some really cool stuff there. Also, we have the mobile jog widget, which I absolutely love this. So instead of having to be you know, stationary at your laptop, you can just scan that QR code and operate your machine from your phone. It's really, really cool. Also, we have the calibration options here. So if you have a custom machine or you really wanna fine tune your machine specific to the way that you've designed it, this is where you would do that. Also, we have a calibrate option for your servo. So if you have a servo, you would be able to run those options into this uh, calibration wizard, which is really cool. You also have your flashing tool here. So if you need to reflash Gerbil into your controller or anything like that, you do have that option as well. 
Okay, other than that, we do have uh, tooling options as well. So if you're running an IoT relay, this is where you would turn on your tools. It also turns on through the G code. So if you're uh, creating your G code in OpenBuilds CAM, that would be a part of the initiation. So once you start the job, the tool would initiate, which is really cool. You have options for spindle, laser, plasma, and coolant. And of course, here's your tool off option. We also have a check size option here, which we'll go over once we uh, upload the Hello World to our machine. It's a really cool feature, once again, just to check the parameters of your job before you start running it. Okay, so down here at the bottom, we have more tabs here and features of the control software. The 3D viewer, I absolutely love. This is just great. It's like built-in cam, basically. You can really fine tune your machine and see where it's working. You can zoom in here and you know just see the, the different tool paths. It's just a really great feature. And of course, right here on the right side, you'll see your machine profile. You have the CB machine, really cool. And then of course you have your simulations here. Just really great. Love the 3D viewer. Then the serial console, obviously. So this is more towards the actual code that you will see when your machine is functioning. So right here, I'm looking at my Gerbil settings. And of course, all the movements that we've made and things like that. You also have options for macros. So this is uh, generally for more advanced users, but you can set up custom waypoints on your machine and uh, specific to how you're milling if you're doing like multiple projects at once. This really comes in handy. So something that you might find yourself using later on. And then of course you have the G code editor, which is really great. You can edit your own custom G code and write your own code based on how you want your machine to function. So really cool options here. Absolutely love this control software. Once again, you know, coming up here to the troubleshooting tab, there are some more features here too. If you're running a probe, this would be an option here to test your status just to make sure that it is functioning correctly before you uh, run a probing cycle. We've got a door sensor here as well as additional buttons. And then of course your change log. Up at the top here, you have an option for support. And I really can't stress this enough. Please reach out if you have any questions. The Open Builds Forum is full of builders and engineers that just love to communicate about you know, this hobby and just CNC in general. And we're here to help. And if you have any questions, please reach out. All you have to do is select that option there, create a thread, and you'll get immediate responses. So it's just a great place to communicate with Open Builds employees and engineers alike. So make sure to utilize that feature. Just really great stuff there. So coming back here to the control tab, now that we have everything reviewed here on the control software, let's go ahead and go back to openbuilds.com. You can see the visit option here. And we're gonna go into OpenBuilds CAM G code generator, and we're gonna run that hello world. So coming back to the software tab, let's open up OpenBuilds CAM G code generator. This is an online server, so it'll take you to that location. You know, if you've used this before too, you'll also see an option for recover last used workspace or start with a new workspace. We're gonna start with a new workspace. And the first thing we're gonna do is go into settings here. So going into the settings tab, we're going to select the default settings here for our CB machine. We're using an open builds black box. If you're using something different, you have options here to select the generic Gerbil, Smoothie Board, Spark Concepts X Pro, but we're using the black box. So we're going down here um, obviously the, the tool options here, we'll just select uh, an option for our spindle. Everything else has been customized based on your default option that you've selected. So we're gonna go ahead and save this. So what you'll see here is your work area for your machine. So similar to the 3D viewer, the cam is going to display your work plane here. So once again, you can interact and you know utilize this feature to work on different G code and projects that you have in mind. Really cool stuff here. So what we need to do now is go back to our workspace tab here. We're going to open up a file and it says here, open hello world example, select that. And we're going to select the CNC hello world. If you're using a laser drag knife or plasma, you would select those options. We're selecting the CNC hello world and it's going to go ahead and populate this G code for you. So what we have here is a path inside, which is the hello. We have a pocket, which is gonna be for the gear. And then we have an outside cut for the world. So this is gonna give you an example of three different tool paths. 
So it's just a really great example to start off with. So since this has been calculated here, we're gonna go ahead and transfer this G-code over to the Open Builds control. So go ahead and select this option here. And the first thing you're going to see is the Hello World populate here in the 3D view. So now before we start this job, we're gonna go ahead and set our zero point and also do a check size feature just to show you how that operates. And of course, setting our zero point, which is one of the most essential parts of any type of project that you're starting. So to get started here, what we need to do is go ahead and establish that zero point. So since we're just using our spoiler board as an example here of material that we could possibly be working on, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and move my Y axis. I'm gonna move back to incremental jog here. And I'm gonna move my Y axis in a negative direction so I can get my router spindle mount above the front left corner of my spoiler board. Now this is the start point. So from there, the machine will move back and forth into this work plane, but this is always going to be your starting point, the front left corner of the material. So making negative movements here, I'm gonna bring this table all the way back to where my router spindle mounts over that front left corner. It's pretty much hovering above it. So you'll see that my Y axis is right above the front left corner here. Same with the X axis. One millimeter increments here. I'm just moving that over to the right slightly. So I'm pretty much hovered over this, this quadrant of my work area. And then of course the Z axis here, we have plenty of travel here since we're using a C-beam gantry plate. But the idea is here, as you're manufacturing your project, the, the Z is gonna move up and down based on the location of where it's working. So as you're doing like the text, you'll notice that it's gonna go through the path and then it's gonna move up into another location based on what you're working on exactly. So what we wanna do is bring this down to a level to where it can move up and down freely. So bringing the Z axis down slightly here, that looks good there. And now I can set my zero for X, Y, and Z. So you'll see that your digital readout zero out here. That's exactly what we want. So now we're gonna go ahead and run a check size feature and just make sure that everything is within our work parameters. All right, that looks great. So check size worked perfect. So again, we're gonna set that zero point and let's go ahead and run that job. And you can see I'm following along with the 3D viewer here. It's in real time. And let's watch our machine work. Okay, so everything's functioning great here. Our machine is ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the job here. Stop it. I'm gonna go ahead and run a homing cycle. Okay, so that completes the wiring and software portion of this video. And as you can see, your machine came out great. It's operating flawlessly. Everything is working perfectly and as it should. And now you're ready to run some cool projects. So make sure to stay tuned for future videos. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and make sure to check out the Open Builds Forum.